So I'm here today to talk to you about a thing I call digital nutrition, and it's something I've been talking about for about the last six years or so. And it's about noticing how technology has suddenly crept and colonised lots of sections of our life. How we live, how we love and how we learn is being impacted by this. I talk to young people when I do presentations in schools about things like virtual vitamins. Could we look at a game and see whether that game has vitamin E for empathy? We have the opportunity to connect with people from different perspectives rather than just shooting everything that moves in front of us. Consider too your relationship with technology. A lot of it's, you know, not just what we eat, but then how what we think about when we're eating. This is a meme from a couple of years ago called um, Women Alone Laughing Eating Salad. Because ladies, I'm not sure about you, but when I am eating my salad, I'm always alone and I find it hilarious. Today I'm going to talk to you about something completely different, I guess, um, to maybe some of the things that you've been hearing about. And this is really around this notion of unplugging and digital detoxing and taking smartphones away and all of these sorts of issues that we're hearing, especially in this state um, and young people uh, around maybe some of the impacts of technology. And when I started this work about 10 years ago, I really was focused on young people and the impacts on, of ki on kids of this digital saturation. Increasingly, the conversation has moved to us as adults. So, what is this thing I call digital nutrition? It is not an app for counting calories or tracking your food, okay? That's the first thing. It's really um, just about using the analogy with food to overcome this obsession we have with screen time, especially with young people. You might have noticed that kids have screen time limits, but we as adults don't. Good evening and welcome to this special vivid edition of q and I'm Tony Jones, here to answer your questions tonight. The Chief Executive of the CSIRO, Larry Marshall. Cyber psychologist Jocelyn Brewer, who argues for a healthier relationship with technology. Rapper, musician and media entrepreneur Adam Briggs. The co-founder of Australian software giant Atlassian, Mike Cannon-Brooks. And a broadcaster and actor, Faustina Agoli. We're not going to sort of slow down the march of technology in a global level, mm. but we can still choose to some extent what's allowed and not allowed in Australia. We're going to come back to that question a little later in more detail. Jocelyn, what do you think? Uh, we're talking freedom of the press, we're talking about the Orwellian nature of control. It sounds a lot like a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> yeah. um, Our next question comes from Tara Hodge. Jocelyn, your special subject. Yeah, um, I'm a mum of a two-year-old as well, or a little girl as well, and I constantly am asked questions around how we have kind of a healthy um, relationship with technology and we scroll more healthy habits, I guess, um, more healthy hashtags. So some of the strategies that I really think we need to um, put into place is teaching media literacy and digital literacy so that young people understand that a lot of what shows up in your social media feed is not real life um, and that real life is probably not that Instagrammable and not really something that we want to be looking at all the time. <laughs> Uh, th there's a lot of research that shows we can't have deep and meaningful relationships with 7,000 people, you know. Maybe seven, you know. Who are the people that you can call when you're in a really tricky spot? They're the kinds of relationships we want to be fostering and recognising that our friends online are really just people who are um, kind of creeping out on us sometimes, not in the most healthy way. Falcina, what do you think? Um, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Jocelyn. All right. With so much thinking going on in this space today, I thought I'd start with by taking a little moment for us to refresh our personal hard drives, our brains. If technology and the internet was addictive, let's just pretend for a moment it, it, it could be addictive and it was dangerous then, why weren't we talking about preventing these issues of overuse, of problematic internet use? We know that fad diets and detoxes don't work in the long term. So this is why I flipped the conversation to digital nutrition, about it being a more positive and sustainable relationship with technology, just the same way we'd consider, hopefully, our relationship to food.